Hi guys, today we're taking a look at the latest sim racing cockpit from Track Racer. This is the Alpine Racing TRX with a design that gives you the ability to easily switch between the F1 and GT seating positions. With a lot of adjustability, details are in the description below including purchasing links. So I'll be showing you how to set this up and testing it out with my LG Ultra Gear 49 inch ultra wide gaming monitor installed on the rig and my Fnatic DD2 wheelbase, Club Sport pedals V3 and Club Sport shifter and handbrake. I'll test this out to show you how rigid the frame is and how it feels when racing, highlighting any pros and cons to give you a better idea if it's worth getting or not. But before I begin, if you're new to the channel, hope you can support me by subscribing and hitting the bell icon to get notified of my next release. And if you have any questions, drop them in the comments below. The Alpine TRX Sim Racing Cockpit comes split between a number of large boxes with all the components being really well packaged inside with polystyrene to protect it. I've laid out all the items you get in the packaging and the instruction manual is available by scanning the QR code you get in the packaging or you can download it directly from their website and it's definitely worth using an electric screwdriver to assist with putting this all together. Start with the seat platform of the cockpit and remove it by taking the screws off underneath. Then take the seat sliders and attach them to the seat base using four screws and cut washers. You can then attach one of the handlebars onto the sliders and clip them into position. Next, reattach the seat platform onto the seat sliders using the four screws that were initially removed. Then taking one of the front side arms, remove all the screws from the bottom and attach the circular silver ring by slightly loosening the screw on there and then slide the ring into position and tighten. Do the same on the other side arm. The side arms can then be attached to the rear seat base by slotting it into position and attaching the screws to secure it. Then loosen the screw on the silver ring and move it closer to cover the joint location. Repeat the same on the other side. Moving on to the front pedal plate, remove the 12 screws from the front lower area of the side mounts and slot the pedal mount into the frame and screw into position. Clip in the handlebar onto the front sliders, inserting into the clips at either side. Remove the foam coverings on the side and then attach the monitor mounts via the screws at the sides. You can then place the monitor plate on top and screw in to secure. There's a number of different wheelbase mounting options available. I'm going to go for the one that allows me to side mount my Fnatic DD2. Start with the extended side arms and screw them into the slider on either side. Taking the two small side arms, attach the metal tube, then taking the side arm adjustment brackets, attach the side arms with the adjustment knobs to the frame. You can then attach the wheelbase with the rubber side protectors using two screws and two knobs. Next, moving on to attaching the seat, place the seat mounts into position and attach to the seat base with a screw and nut. Then place the seat into position and tighten in place. Next on to installing the shifter mount. It can be placed on either side. Start by unscrewing the screws on the side where you want it placed. Place the side mount into position and screw in the screws. Then attach the shifter mount top. Remove any packaging from the rig and peel away the plastic coverings on the lettering. To fit the monitor onto the monitor stand, you need the integrated single monitor stand, which is specifically for the TRX cockpit is pretty simple to install and comes with screws to mount directly onto the stand. And that's it, the rig is fully assembled now and I'd say it was generally straightforward to install taking around three to four hours and it took this long as I was filming all the stages as I was going along. I'd say the wheel mount area was quite fiddly as I didn't find the instructions that clear on it but it's definitely easier to assemble in comparison to a flat packed aluminium profile frame as a lot of the components come pre-assembled. Taking a closer look at the Alpine TRX racing cockpit it's pretty large covering a length of 1521 millimeters and a width of 713 millimeters. The black tubular structure looks looks aesthetically nice with their branding across some of the areas. The black TRX hybrid fixed fiberglass seat is really nice with a bucket style seat having a nice comfortable feel to it. It has diamond shaped stitching on the soft foam cushioning on both the seat and back. It fits waist up to 55 inches. The monitor mount works well with my 49 inch LG Ultra Gear gaming monitor and can support monitors or TVs up to 70 inches. It has a VESA mount from 75 millimeters to 400 millimeters. Now one of the major benefits of this rig is the number of adjustments you have on it without the need for using any tools. The seat can be easily adjusted and placed further back into a F1 position or you can unscrew the knobs at the side and lift it up into the GT position together with having a slider underneath to move it back and forth and a thumb screw at the side to adjust the angle. 
on the pedal plate you can tilt the pedals again into an F1 or GT position by adjusting the thumb screws. Use the slider to adjust it back and forth and also adjust the angle tilt on the pedals. On the wheel deck you can slide it backwards and forwards and change the angle up and down. The integrated single monitor stand which bolts onto the monitor mount also has some adjustability giving you the flexibility to move it backwards and forwards. The number of configurations possible on this rig is pretty impressive plus it gives you easy accessibility to change your seating and racing positions easily without using any tools to make these adjustments which is a massive benefit. I've got the rig set up with my Fnatic DD2 with the Club Sport Pedals V3 and the wheel I'm using is a CSL steering wheel GT V2 with the Club Sport Universal Hub V2 for Xbox. And at the side I've got the Club Sport shifter and handbrake attached on the shifter mount. I've got all this connected up to my PC which is a custom build from Cyberpower with an insane spec. So it has an AMD Ryzen 9 7950X 3D with a 16 core processor. The GPU is a AMD RX 7900 with 24 gigs of memory. It's got 32 gigs of RAM and a 2 terabyte SSD. My monitor is the LG 49GR85DC Ultra Gear gaming monitor with a 240Hz refresh rate that provides a 5120 by 1440 resolution. It has a 1000R curvature and it provides an ultra wide 32 by 9 aspect ratio that provides a massive screen real estate allowing you to see a lot of detail in your peripheral vision giving quite an impressive racing experience that's smooth and immersive. So let's test this out and see how it feels and what kind of flex and movement you get from the frame. I've initially got it set up in the GT position so to do this I've raised the seat at the back by using the turning knob to get an incline and I've left the pedals in a flat down position. Racing in this position is pretty comfortable with the seat having a good amount of cushioning. It even has detachable padded strips if you wanted extra support. And after racing for a couple of hours, it doesn't feel too hot or sticky on my back. Now racing with my Fnatic DD2, I've got the torque levels set to 16 Newton meters. And as you can see, there is some flex coming from the wheel deck. If I now move the wheel really aggressively, you can see even more movement on the wheel deck. But to be honest, this isn't a surprise as the wheel deck has a lot of moving parts to it and the overall structure of the cockpit consists of a tubular frame. So it wouldn't have the level of rigidity you'd get from an aluminium profile rig, which is a lot more rigid. With the pedals in this position, when you press down hard, you also notice a small amount of flex, which isn't that noticeable when driving, so not too bad. Now flipping over into the F1 position, you just need to unscrew the back, turn the back turn knobs on the seat and drop the seat back and raise the pedal plate up and push the pedals a bit closer by sliding it with the handlebar. I've slightly lowered the wheel deck and pulled it closer giving me a better positioning and this is one of the good things about the rig as it allows you to adjust it without unscrewing or changing the position of any part with no need to use any tools. The racing experience in this position feels good with the seat being further back still holding my weight and body really well but I found the pedals in this position do have a lot more movement on them and especially when pressing down hard on the brake you can see the flex it's giving. The wheel deck feels the same but one of the things that really surprised me was a shift amount which had a lot more flex on it and I didn't feel it was that great with my Fnatic Club Sport shifter and handbrake mounted to it as it seems to move quite a bit which could be because there's a lot of adjustable points on the shifter mount which doesn't give it the rigidity it needs but overall the F1 racing position does feel good and comfortable with the integrated monitor mount positioning my 49 inch LG monitor pretty well giving a really good immersive racing experience. I'd say the the adjustability on the rig is its major selling point as it gives you a lot of flexibility to get the perfect seating position but as you saw this does come at a price where you do experience some flex due to the way it's designed. So in summary the TRX is an impressive racing cockpit giving a lot of adjustability and versatility without the need of using any tools to make changes plus it gives you the option to change your racing position from an F1 to GT and vice versa in a matter of minutes. It can support direct drive wheels up to 25 newton meters providing multiple mount options and you can have an immersive racing experience with an integrated monitor mount or use a freestanding monitor stand. Assembly of the rig wasn't too bad but in some parts of the construction you do need two people to put it together 
due to the weight or putting some of the parts together like the seat which is just easier to do with another person helping. Negatives wise you do get a lot of flex from the wheel deck and pedal mount as it's not as rigid as an aluminium frame which is more noticeable with the pedal mount when they're in the F1 position but when racing it wasn't as noticeable. The size of the TRX is another drawback as it does take up quite a lot of room especially when you have the rig in the F1 position with the seat being further back. It would have been nice if Track Racer included some cable management clips or velcro straps and price wise it isn't cheap coming in at just under £1,590 with all the additional add-ons so if you only raced in the GT position and were on a budget then this definitely isn't the rig for you. But on the flip side if you had the space and were looking for a rig with a lot of versatility together with a lot of adjustability without the need of any tools then this is definitely a rig for you giving you all this to provide a really immersive racing experience. I have given my feedback to Track Racer regarding some of the movement that occurs on the rig and they are looking into getting this improved. So there you have it, you've come to the end of another video and I hope it's helped anyone thinking of purchasing this. Details are in description below including purchasing links and if you have any questions let me know in the comments below and for those of you who've got to the end of this video please leave a comment with Alpine TRX as it's awesome to see who's got to the end of my video and hopefully you guys enjoyed it. You can follow me on my socials, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications to be notified of my next release. Thanks for viewing and see you in the next one.